Hey guys, it's Linux Next here. In today's video, I wanted to go over is Waylon ready for everyone to use? And I wanted to go over some of the issues that I have been uh, researching about over the past, I would say, a couple of months and just trying to figure out and piece together like what is really left on the Waylon desktop for it to just run good on a computer. And it's not just going to be about Wayland, it's also going to be about some development as well that has been kind of just slow when it comes to bringing certain features that X11 already has. And I, of course, I know that these things are going to be slow and they're going to take a while, uh, but it just is to point out just if you're if you're going to like use Wayland, for example, uh, there is like certain features that could be missing for you that you actually relied on on X11 without you really knowing. <laughs> But of course, before this video starts, here is a word from our kind sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Proton VPN, one of the most secure and private VPNs in the world with over 4.1 thousand servers in 88 countries. Try it out for free to see if you like everything it's got to offer with its net shield ad blocker. Kill switch if something goes wrong with your VPN. Proton VPN also has its browser extension if you don't want the client on your desktop. And of course, Proton VPN supports Android, Windows, macOS, even Linux, the operating system I use. Pay 10 bucks a month with a 30 day back guarantee if you're not satisfied. Also, Proton VPN offers Proton Mail, one of my favorite mailing applications that protects your emails with end-to-end -end encryption so no one can read them. Proton VPN also recently released their Proton Mail desktop application so you can read your emails on your desktop easily. Proton Mail's desktop also supports Windows, macOS, and Linux. I've also been using Proton Mail desktop application on Linux and it runs awesome on my Arch system. And as an alternative to storage, Proton VPN offers Proton Drive drive a end-to-end -end encrypted open source storage with Swiss laws applied so your files are protected. Get started with 5 gigabytes of free cloud storage or pay just $4 a month for 200 gigabytes of storage. $10 a month for 500 gigabytes of storage with Proton's ecosystem which includes Proton Mail, Proton Calendar, Proton VPN and Proton Pass. Or just for $24 a month you can get 3 terabytes of storage with Proton's ecosystem included as well on top of that. If you really want to try what Proton VPN has to offer, go to the link in the description and sign up today. So what is the first issue with Wayland? And one of the issues is that uh, some applications don't sort Wayland natively yet. So they have to run through uh, a thing called X Wayland, which is where they create an X server and an X client. And these applications, they run through that and then they go through the Wayland compositor to the Wayland um, application, which would be you know, like your KD Plasma Kwin compositor that would then show the application properly accordingly with, of course, maybe things like hardware acceleration maybe not working or most of the time it does work. But that is the main uh, problem I would say with Wayland right now is there's some applications like Wine for example when you try to play games they run through X Wayland now this isn't necessarily a problem as when you do actually start to do like comparisons with X Wayland and Wayland natively uh, there's not really many problems it's more just uh, maybe you have a high count of memory for example that may be a, a cause when you try to play a game you might have a bit higher memory allocation and that's probably just about it when it comes to the X Wayland problem I, I don't think it's necessarily necessarily a problem but it is a issue where there is particular apps that I'll go into that don't support certain things that then go all the way back to chromium development where certain Wayland things haven't been brought for these applications so they have to run through X Wayland still so like I just said before there's certain apps that don't use Wayland by default yet example chromium doesn't support uh, Wayland by default you have to enable it in the chrome settings and then there's certain things like VARPT coding only just got supported with Wayland, which is a good thing, but it's something that, for example, applications like Discord uh, don't support that yet because they're on an older Electron version, which if you don't know, Discord runs through Electron, which is Chromium, so it's running through basically a Chromium window, and so if Discord's running Electron 28, for example, that's Chromium 120, which 120 came out a pretty long time ago, maybe like a couple months ago, uh, which is missing some Wayland features like VARPI decoding, which I'll go into uh, further in the video, but for right now, the applications that don't work properly is like for example discord string sharing not working under x wayland or even natively under wayland and this is like i said this is not a wayland issue this is discord issue because they don't want to sort uh, wayland yet not necessarily support but they just they have higher priorities to fix on the application than to bring wayland support on discord which i can understand that but at the same time uh, now that we're moving to wayland these things do need to get supported properly 
supported with things like hardware acceleration being enabled and screen share with audio that would be pretty cool discord if you could uh, actually fix that but like i said discord runs through x whalen by default when you try to screen share one of the issues that happens is that um it can only detect other x11 applications so it's, and it can't detect your displays either so if you have you know two three displays it can't see them because of how whalen works and it's running through x whalen so then you have this issue where it can't see it and then it only can see x11 applications so if a firefox for example is running through whalen it's not going to be able to see that which means you're not going to be able to pick it and actually screen share on it which is just another issue which is particularly to do with discord not to do with whalen necessarily so basically this whole video is just going to be me pointing out things that aren't actually to do with whalen because whalen already supports these things it's more just companies not necessarily caring enough to support these features so then everyone can have a nice time under whalen and the other issue is like for example obs browser docs not working under whalen natively and it having to be disabled uh, a couple years back because it just did not work and it was buggy because cef chromium uh, development project which is able to you know display windows within a certain like window and it doesn't support that on wayland prop i think it does now but now it's just up to i think the obs developers to just support it we have a read through here it says like any updates yet with plasma 6 similarly planning to drop xor this is more necessary than ever which is true because if you want to use browser docs on obs you have to force obs into x wayland mode to get your browser docs back or if you want to do like type of like snapping where you can break these off and snap them onto each other so you can see here my my um browser doc of kick chat actually does work and i can interact with it and it works great it's it's running through x wayland but that is just one problem is where obs doesn't support browser docs really because of some cef chromium issue that needs to be supported and uh, <laughs> i don't know when necessarily this will be supported if anyone has any information about any type of merge request um that would be awesome i would love to know about uh, this issue more and where it's necessarily going uh, as last time i checked it basically no one was doing anything really to bring support because everyone was just using x11 but now that we are using wayland hopefully this does actually uh get merged and then obs supports it and re-enables wayland support so then we can use wayland browser docs and we don't have to force obs into x wayland mode now what are some of the workarounds like i just said before we can force obs into uh the x wayland mode either by we um grab flat seal here and if you're on kde plasma you can actually just turn off the wayland socket and it will force it to run in x wayland mode but if you're on gnome for example you would have to add a environment variable which is qt underscore qpa underscore platform equals xcb which will then uh, force it into a x wayland mode and then uh, for discord screen sharing uh, there is one option that we can do we can use x wayland video bridge which is pre-installed on basically every kde plasma distro now which some people don't like you cannot uninstall it if you want to but this basically bridges the gap by treating uh the using a xgd desktop portal then uh, treating it as a x11 application so then it discord can actually see that x11 application so then you can select it and then screen share whatever you picked on the xgd desktop portal which would either be you know, either a display or an application that's one way of solving it or we can use uh vestop that is another project if we do search it up here uh, vestop you can see the github project here and this is a um, really good application to run discord with vencord mods but it also does support um, their own type of screen sharing that they created with audio so if you want to screen share uh, discord with audio you can uh, do that now one of the other problems is with uh, chromium development with varpy now varpy uh, if you don't know it's a type of stack in like Mesa, for example that you can use on your amd card to do encoding and decoding and probably some other things but right right now i'm using uh, varpy hevc which is h.265 uh, for encoding this video uh, in like 1440p 20k bitrate and so one of the problems that um, recently got fixed or merged in like i think it was like chrome 123 is uh varpy video acceleration on wayland so before you couldn't use varpy video acceleration on chrome at all or any type of application that used uh, chromium so like for example discord with electron you can't couldn't use varpy decoding on wayland because electron didn't have this patch for varpy acceleration on wayland within chrome and it still doesn't have it so we have to wait for that to be updated so then we can have varpy decoding on wayland but also right now chromium decided to disable some packages or code within chrome that did not allow 
floppy decoding to work properly. So now uh, there has to be some contribution uh, made in Mesa to actually uh, make this work properly uh, when you enable the correct arguments to get VAPI acceleration work. So I think when uh, these get enabled and then Electron uh, gets updated to the selected version and you have the right Mesa version as well, then VAPI decoding and encoding will work under Wayland properly. Now, one of the other issues is uh, screen tearing under Wayland because when you try to uh, you know, use Wayland, you basically are using uh, a type of VSync. One of the problems that you can solve with this is by using uh, VRR, which, which, which is what came in GNOME 46 as an experimental mode, as people really wanted that. As When you use Wayland, like I said, it uses that VSync mode, and so your frames are basically going to be the same, and that can cause issues because if you don't have powerful enough hardware to go over your refresh rate, then your frames will actually start to uh, double or triple uh, of the same frame that happens. So it can be a stutter effect that will happen when you try to play those games. And so enabling VR basically solves that issue. And one of the other things that we are trying to bring support is string tearing, which did finally land in Linux 6.8 for a atomic async page flip. So now you can use this atomic async thing in the kernel, but the desktop environments also have to bring support for it on their own compositor level. So Kelly Plasma has a merge request open right now to support screen tearing with the new atomic mode setting. And this is supposed to land in KDE Plasma 6.1, uh, which is going to be sometime around, I think, uh, I think June or May sometime is going to be released. And this could arrive sooner as well in maybe 6.0.4 possibly. Uh, it's a date said here that it's pretty low priority when it comes to supporting it. So they could actually release this earlier. And um, that's what they have been thinking, but it may still come in 6.1. And probably one of the other issues is that Steam doesn't support Wayland by default on their client. So if you try to do things like home streaming, for example, where you stream your game from your desktop to another computer on the local network, uh, it's not going to work properly with Wayland. Like it won't be able to see your screen because it thinks it's running on X11. Uh, so what you have to do is basically add a Pipewire argument to Steam to actually bring up a XGG desktop portal to then select your monitor, which is just one way of fixing it. But it's just something that particular Steam needs to support at some point very soon. I think they need to uh, do this by at least this year because everyone's basically switching to Wayland now. And you either need to add that pipewire argument or you need to use an application like Sunshine, uh, which is a type of uh, you know thing that runs to allow home streaming. And it does support Wayland properly and things like video encoding with like Varpy, for example. And uh, just recently, like a couple weeks ago, they did a really big release that included literally so many options here to fix so many things with uh, the Linux version particularly. So now, instead of uh, you know waiting for Steam to introduce uh, Wayland natively, you can just use Sunshine and then you can use an application like Moonlight, which allows you to uh, use Sunshine together to then you see your game on whatever you know, tablet or laptop that you want to use. Now, one of the other big issues is trying to use NVIDIA on Wayland, as that, that, that's been a big problem problem for a while now where the NVIDIA and also like Wayland protocols don't support what NVIDIA uses. So it's been this like long chicken and egg type thing where it's taken NVIDIA a bit of time to actually implement the proper things in their driver and the proprietary one. And then also Wayland protocol to support certain things that NVIDIA needs like explicit sync, which will come in May in a NVIDIA beta driver release. That's really good to see. Uh, but also like Wayland supporting Explicit Sync. That actually happened like yesterday, I think. Uh, explicit Sync was merged in the Wayland protocol. And so now you have to wait for your uh, uh, desktop environment to support Explicit Sync in their Wayland compositor. So for example, GNOME, they've already got one open and same with KDE Plasma. They also have one open. So when it comes to NVIDIA support on Wayland, uh, that is slowly coming together as well. But some of the issues that I've had with NVIDIA on Wayland with my RTX 2060 is things like, you know, when you install the proprietary driver, you try to log into Wayland, uh, it just, you get hit with like a black screen. That's something that I've had happen before, uh, trying to use NVIDIA on Wayland under KDE Plasma 6 on Wayland. That's one of the issues that I've had. And if you don't have explicit sync support or even implicit sync support, because that's something NVIDIA doesn't want to support either, then you have this issue where certain applications will stutter and be just glitchy in general, like Chrome and Steam for some reason. Uh, one of those applications that to stutter because it doesn't have any type of um, synchronization 
with the Wayland compositor and the driver. So you have this problem on NVIDIA cards where you know, it doesn't support explicit sync, it doesn't support implicit sync either. And then the other one is uh, EGL stream, uh, which is something to do in the Wayland compositor, uh, another type of like way of how certain things interact with each other with like OpenGL and Vulkan. And so the NVIDIA finally decided to ditch EGL stream and use GBM, which is a newer one that Wayland has been like using. So now that NVIDIA is finally like, you know, improving on these things and implementing you know, proper support for Wayland. And then we also have, you know, NVK arriving plus Nova, which is kernel, uh, open source kernel driver for NVIDIA that's developed by Red Hat. And probably one of the last things that I would say is uh, HDR support on Wayland. Now HDR support, I don't think that even works on X11, but on Wayland, uh, we were actually already gotten HDR support. But when it comes to actually using HDR in like your games, for example, that is something that is still being worked on. So for example, like HDR being enabled by default on Proton, that's something that will take a while to happen probably, uh, which I hopefully will be you know, figured out by the end of the year. Uh, so when it comes to like using HDR stuff or watching HDR content, that can be a bit tricky on Wayland and it's all coming together uh, slowly. So with that out of the way, I think the conclusion is that, you know, Wayland is definitely ready if you have the right hardware. Uh, if you use NVIDIA, you're going to have to wait to at least like May of this year to actually be able to use Wayland on GNOME or Plasma 6. Uh, if you do have a good experience on NVIDIA, uh, definitely comment down below if, if you do, because I've had a uh, mixture experience where like I could use uh, my RTX 2060 on Wayland back like a year ago on like the 535 driver, but now I like, can't use in, uh, Wayland for some reason under NVIDIA on like the 550 driver. So it's a bit of a, a weird problem with that. But yeah, the conclusion is that uh, Wayland is definitely kind of ready if you have the right hardware. So if you did enjoy this uh, little rant and, and issues that have appeared in Wayland, I would definitely give it a like and I would definitely comment down below if you know if you have any uh, things with Wayland that you dislike or like if you have an X11 application that doesn't work, I would definitely like to know. And of course, um, uh, thank you to my uh, the sponsor of today's video, Proton VPN. You can definitely use Proton VPN. I think it's a def uh, definitely a, a good option. They have plenty of applications to choose from, not just a VPN. They have your own Proton Drive, Proton Mail, which I do use. I do use Proton Mail. It's a very good mailing uh, service. And uh, thank you to my people who support the channel as well. I'll check out the image up on the screen. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.